Hi, welcome to ZFF Daily. I'm Kristen Vermilia. Today we're going to talk about Brazilian films with director Marcelo Mesquita, and we'll also take a look at the film Diana. But first, let's go look and see what's been happening at the Zurich Film Festival since our last show. Another great night on the green carpet at the 9th Zurich Film Festival. Yesterday was the world premiere screening of director Tim McCann's White Rabbit, a drama about a bullied student looking for revenge. We'll see Tim here in the studio this Friday. I've been here a few times, I love it, and I'm pretty psyched about it. Einfach all die Begegnungen mit diesen Künstlern ist einfach genial. Einfach die lockere Art, die sie haben. Great to see so many people enjoying the festival. Joining me now is director Marcello Mosquito. Welcome. Thank you. So tell me about where the story came from for the film. Uh, six years ago, we and my partner who directed the film with me, Guilherme Valengo, we decided to do a, a documentary about the graffiti scene in, in Sao Paulo. And then we started the research, but the scene was too, too big. So we decided to do about a, a group of artists. There was Ogemios and Nunca and their friends. They were like very famous outside of Brazil, but they didn't get the, the, the success inside the Brazil at, at that time. So we started to do the documentary. And then one year later, the government starts to cover the uh, works at the streets with gray paint. So it was r really crazy because we started to follow those guys who decided what should be on the streets and what should not be. Saying, oh, I like this, just leave it there, but I don't like the one, erase it. So the documentary is about a group of artists that does a lot of nice works and a group of crazy guys who erased their paints in Sao Paulo. And that's how the idea uh, gets strong and how we got the film. Great, well before, before we talk any more about this, let's take a look at Gray City. Sao Paulo, the largest city in Brazil. A loud and chaotic concrete jungle. Street art flourishes here. Innovative graffiti artists like Os Gemeos and Nunca established a new style and their work has spread to galleries across the globe. But when the artists returned from an exhibition in 2008, they found their work had been painted over in grey. A clean city law had been passed, in part to combat so-called visual pollution. The destruction of these artworks triggered a broad debate. So tell me, how did you convince them to be a part of the film, to trust you? Well, that wasn't a very easy job work because in the beginning they, they didn't really want to do the, the documentary and uh, we were trying really hard to follow them, but we, it, it was hard because we didn't have the money in the beginning and to do the film and they were like all around Europe and we couldn't follow them every time. Then we started to follow those guys who were erasing the, the, their paintings in Sao Paulo. It was easier. So we filmed first those guys for like two years. And then I showed the, 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 the material to Ogemius and Nunca. They said, whoa, this is hot, okay, so let's do it. And then I convinced them. I, I had to go to another way before to, to show them that we have like a serious propose in, in, in the film. Great. Um, I mean, one of the things that comes up in the film strongly is the whole idea of what is graffiti and what is art. So what's your answer to that? Well, I think uh, graffiti, it's a movement that was born at like 30, 40 years ago at the Bronx in, in New York and wasn't born as an art movement, it was a, a transgressive movement. It, you know, if you, if you understand what the hip hop is, it's a, a popular culture from the Bronx. They, people in the Bronx, they didn't get the real access to the culture inside New York, so they started to do the, their own dance, their own singing, and they, they started to put their names on the trains. 
So this is what the hip hop is about. But 20, 30 years after that, people started to, to, to realize this work, the graffiti, part, the, one of the part of the hip hop culture, has something good that could be inside the galleries, inside the museum. So they started to put money on it. So they mm -hmm. call it the street art, but graffiti and street art is the same thing. It's the same origin. So it's not what about if it's art or if it's not art, but it's important to understand what graffiti is about. There's always a politic issue. There's always a message over there. And then after you get the gallery thing, you know? So I'm not saying this movie if it's art or if it's not art. I'm just showing people what is on the street. Mm. Great. Um, one of the things I was struck with was that these guys are real thinkers. They're poets. Like the, a lot of the things that were coming out of their mouth, I was really struck with. That they're, they're, they're thinkers. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. And uh, I think Sao Paulo, as a heavy city, as a chaotic city, makes them uh, think and have this different view of the city because, you know, I'm from Sao Paulo. You spend more time inside a car or inside your job. You don't walk like here in Zurich in the streets. You mm. don't have, you can ride a bike. You cannot ride a bike. I mean, it's really difficult to see the city. And those guys, they do, they, they are on the streets because they need to do their graffiti. So they walk where people uh, don't walk. So they have a different view of the city and they have property to, to talk about the city. I used to joke with my friends that they could be good governments. Because yeah. they really know the, the city's issues. They really know where, where the problems are because they are there. And sometimes you just don't get close to this. So that's why they, they talk like that and mm. they have this vision special. Do you think that they saw it as a victory when the mayor came to the Grey Wall? Well, it wasn't exactly a victory because it's kind of an embarrassing situation. Uh, the, the mayor just let them over there talking like w what's happening. Mm. But I think it was a, a, a good start to, to have a dialogue, to have a discussion mm -hmm. about uh, street art in Sao Paulo. And the society got the, the news because there was a lot of press and a lot of media. So it was a victory, but the situation over there was, was very weird. I was there and it was weird. The, the mayor, he was kind of, he didn't know what to say to those people, and that's what we can see in the movie. Mm. So Brazil is a country that the festival is focusing on for the New World View section of the, uh, the film festival this year. And um, I just wanted to ask you about why, why are Brazilian films so important right now? Well, I think there's a lot of uh, people looking at Brazil right now because of a uh, good moment, uh, economy, good moments, and... We had the World Cup and the Olympics, and we do have a new filmmaker's generation coming out because like 20, 30 years ago, it was really difficult to make movies in Brazil because we didn't get the money, we didn't get like uh, the government supplies to do that, we didn't get really the technology. So there's a new time in Brazil uh, with, with good new filmmakers and, and they're talking about the, the, the Brazilian good things and the Brazilian, of course, bad things. So it's a good opportunity to look to South America, not only Brazil, and to see what we have there. I think it's, it's uh, new days coming on. Excellent. Well, let's take a look now at some of the other Brazilian films here at the festival. The new Worldview section this year is dedicated to Brazil. The selection covers a broad spectrum of cinema, from the idiosyncratic festival jewel O Soma Orador to the popular western Faroeste Caboclo. All sides of Brazilian film production are represented. <laughs> Brazilian cinema has experienced a kind of rebirth. In the 90s, the political climate, as well as competition from telenovelas, gave the Brazilian film industry a hard time. Brazil has 25 times more inhabitants than Switzerland, but proportionally, there exist far fewer cinemas than here. Only 4% of the movies in Brazilian cinemas are produced in their own country. 
But after the 90s crisis, Brazilian filmmakers experienced a steady 10-year boom. Filmmakers like Walter Saez and Fernando Mereas brought Brazilian film back to the big festivals and to the public. To compare, in 2000, 34 motion pictures were produced in Brazil. Ten years later, it was already 274. What are the special ingredients for a Brazilian movie? Mostly proximity to the characters, the close and precise look at them. Another characteristic of Brazilian film is the high degree of attentiveness asked of the spectator. Often they take place in the Fayas, regions affected by violence and poverty. But hope, humor and love remain an integral part. Take a look at the 10 unique movies out of Brazil for yourself here at the Zurich Film Festival. So what's next for you? Uh, my next project? Mm -hmm. I'm doing a, a documentary about the Paralympics uh, games in Rio and the Paralympics athletes and uh, how this is going to happen. You know, we have a, a really interesting scenario right now. We are a Paralympic power in Brazil with good results in the last Paralympic Games in London, but uh, the reality applied in the society is kind of different. We, we don't have ramps on the streets, we don't have access for people with disability in, uh, to, to work and to have a space uh, in, the, in the society. So I will bring the stories of those athletes, how they, 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 they get like no limits to, mm -hmm. to, to win and how can we see that and apply this in society to get a better place for everybody? And the documentary will be released uh, three or four months before the, the games in Rio. Mm -hmm. And I have a, a, a fiction feature movie that will start the next year uh, about a book from uh, Braulio Montovani, the script writer from City of God, mm -hmm. that I'm doing with a, a Another director called it Pepe Cifredi. He's my partner too. Mm -hmm. So these are my, my two next projects that I'm working on it. Well, very exciting. We look forward to checking them out. Congratulations and we wish you the best of luck. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you to invite and thank you all guys. Yeah, thanks for being here. So from the world of poverty to the world of the royals, next we're gonna take a look at Oliver Hirschbiegel's Diana. Lady Diana, Princess of Wales, was one of the most photographed women ever. Though it was over 15 years ago that she died after a car crash in Paris, people are still interested in the story behind Diana. Oliver Hirschbiegel has created a movie on the last two years of Diana Spencer's life. I think people adored her because she was so not like the Brits. She was so not stiff upper lip and you know take it all with irony and sarcasm she was very straightforward very honest and um, people love that because that's very rare these days australian actress naomi watts was chosen to play the role of diana naomi was the first name i ever put down and uh, of course there's always somebody else but i was really hoping that she would that she would do it because she has that rare quality of you know being a star meaning the money comes in and um, being just a brilliant actress last saturday diana had its swiss premiere at the zurich film festival after the world premiere in london Director Oliver Hirschbiegel received critical reviews. Well, they, they, they slashed us, they, they slated us. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't really like film reviews, it was more like polemic. Uh, they just didn't want to like the film, they just didn't like the whole idea, which made them write these vile things about her and the script. Uh, which is actually something that I've experienced with my other film, Downfall. You know, the German press hated the film. They didn't want it to be. I mean, if everybody hated the film, I would go, yeah, they might have a point, but the rest of the world loves the film. So it's, uh, well, it has a good entertainment value.
That's it for today's show. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow on ZFF Daily, we will welcome Stephen Nemeth, who's the producer of COG. On behalf of the entire ZFF Daily team, thanks. Bye.